This is Scott Spratt from ProFootballFocus.com Fantasy, and this is another Fantasy Slam. Week one is in the books, and this is probably the most important time of the season to make good add and drop decisions in your fantasy leagues. There were a lot of surprising performances in week one, some good and some bad. So let's sort through three players that I'm buying into after their positive performances and three players that I'm selling on because of their poor performances. First, the good. Number one is Darren Sproles. Sproles had 11 carries and six targets in the Eagles' comeback win over the Jaguars. That's 17 chances to touch the ball. For me, that workload suggests that Sproles will be a top 25 running back, even in standard formats the rest of the way. I have him ahead of similar players like Fred Jackson, Pierre Thomas, and Joyke Bell. No, Sean Moreno didn't get the early work in the, the Dolphins' surprising win over the, the Patriots. Lamar Miller actually had an early touchdown and had several catches, but Moreno really looked like the stronger running back. He had three-point yards after contact per attempt compared to less than two for Miller and ended up with 24 carries against only 15 for Miller. I see that workload continuing, making Moreno a top 20 running back for the rest of the season. Number three is Brian Quick of the St. Louis Rams. He's a former early second round pick who really hasn't done much the first couple of years of his career. However, in this game, he had nine targets compared to three or fewer for all other Rams wide receivers. For me, he's clearly atop the pecking order among the wide receivers there, and that makes him worth a speculative pickup in deeper formats. Next, here are the three players who have me worried. Number one is Torrey Smith. Smith had just seven targets in, the, in the, uh, the comeback failure by the Ravens against the Bengals. That may sound like a lot, but Flacco threw more than 60 passes as he was trying to catch up. That's a huge total. In all, Smith had a lot fewer targets than both Steve Smith and Dennis Pitta, who had, each had 15. I question whether Smith is the clear number one receiver in this offense anymore, and so he falls outside the top 30 receivers for me. Number two is Michael Crabtree. Now, Crabtree was questionable coming into the 49ers game over the weekend, and so this could be somewhat due to injuries, but he had just four targets compared to nine for Anquan Bolden and six for Vernon Davis. I've been worried about this all along and that he overlaps a lot with Bolden and Stevie Johnson, plus he's on a run-focused team. Vernon Davis is the one player that stretches the field here, and Crabtree's history hasn't been that kind. He's only had more than 900 receiving yards once in his five-year career. I think this could be another poor season for Crabtree. Finally, Nick Foles. Foles had barely any turnovers last season, but ended up with an interception and two fumbles lost in the Eagles' comeback win. Again, he benefited from some broken coverages late to salvage his fantasy day. That's sort of the story of his season last year with those big plays, but he just really looked like a poor player here, and I question whether he can be even a top 10 quarterback the rest of the way. It's a very kind offense, but I think the turnovers could come in bunches the rest of the season. For Pro Football Focus, this is Scott Spratt.